Welcome to my spoiler review of Disney's Cruella. I've been contemplating this for a long time, um, and now that the paywall is down, it's time for one of the most interesting trips to Disney Plus Hall yet, so let's open it up and get started. The film opens in the birth of Estella, and we see her in the year 1964, introduced to Blade by Super Tramp. In short order, we see her meet a young Nina Darling, one of her few, but only friends in primary school, which only step below the one pink points lays the wall in terms of strictness. Her mother takes them both to London, and they stay to her former employer, the Baroness, played by Emma Thompson. She believes she can help them both. This first scene her estate, Hellman Hall, also quite used to be just whisper whisper. However, the Baroness not only responds by turning them away, but by quite literally letting the dogs out on Estella's mother. It was an inciting incident. Estella is alone in London, falling in with her future partners in crime. Jasper and Horace. Hmm. Ten years pass, and Estelle has grown into a young woman played by Emma Stone, alongside Jasper by Joel Fry, and Horace by Paul Walter Hauser. I mentioned this more as the goes on, but I like the approach to his character. He apparently based a performance on Bob Hoskins' role as Smee and Hook, another film I rather like. I also enjoy the use of She's a Rain by the Rolling Stones, given the recent passing of Charlie Watts. Though I admit I can never hear it the same way again after watching Legion. Still, uh, moonlights as both a cleaning lady and a thief, but she does have aspirations of being a fashion designer one day. Let's just say the Wilson Heath years were a very different time as the zombies time of the season plays. One night, she gets a beat that too deep into her cup and decides to turn the window display into her own design layout, such as Nancy and Autry's Butch Maver walking. Surprise her manager, the Baroness loves it and invites Stella to work for her. Address is set to the doors five to one, a track that fits alarmingly well here. Mm. Estella is now figuratively and literally on the ground floor of the Baroness's design business, entering for first day on the job to Nina Simone's feeling good. Here she gets a taste of her cutthroat approach firsthand, dismissing another employee for something simple as coughing or reading for mention in the article. Estella is sent to gather fabric in a nearby shop. As the scene transitions to Fire by Ohio Players, great song by the way, we're introduced to the fashion conscious Erdy, played by John McCrea. Have no issue with his character or the context where he's portrayed. It fits the setting and the movie as a blend of Andy Warhol pop art and early Tim Burton Gothic art. Hmm. As Estella gets the Baroness her lunch, she also witnesses a young lawyer named Roger. He's quite dogged and wants to become a son very much as a counterpart in the original you know, anime film. Much like Anita, apart from the race left to match a casting, he's actually not that different from the original character in 1961. I must say that an end between Stone and Tom's characters as the film goes on is actually surprisingly compelling. Of every one of Disney's live action versions that stay close to sports material, there are ones like this that take a different direction. Mm. Uh, noticing the necklace she was left, begins making a plan with Jasper and Horace to target the black and white ball. However, if Estella were to make a play for the jewels, everyone would know. Solutions used a persona that was long hidden away. Cruella is about to make a grand entrance. I am well aware of the timing given how this movie comes out success of the standalone Joker film and the popular DCU version of Harley Quinn. It's only natural for others to want a piece of that too. Also, this may not be a straight up musical, but this is a really good cover of a whole lot of love as Jasper and Horace are scoping out the ball. Hmm. Anita is now a newspaper editor and photographer who happens to be covering the bowl. Quella makes her debut as we enter the second act. Though she doesn't smoke in this version, the way she burns up her white veil to be a fire red dress is fantastic, and her coming out deep purple's hushed definitely makes an impression. However, the plan goes alright and the distraction. Kill electric light orchestra is a living thing. They try to lure the Baroness's Dalmatians. Also helps the cover of fake pest control is broken up by a very real pest problem. Classic. Hmm. Cruella steals one of the Baroness's cars, leading to another highlight of the film. Car chases to Queen Stone Cold Crazy. Realizing the Baroness is responsible for her mother's fate, she decides to take advantage of her new persona. Next heist is steal her prized Dalmatians that ate the necklace she was after. She just doesn't rule out taking making them into a coat. That sounds familiar. She also has an in with Anita at the London editorial to craft a new mystique of a punk rock fashion queen. I like this approach. I really do. 
kidnapping animations from the dog rumors. The next phase of Cruella's arc begins with at Artie's help. Cruella becomes the dominant persona while Stella becomes the mask in her stead. The Baroness begins making plans for London Spring Week, and when Stella decides that is where Cruella will make her next move. This so begins the second half, making a statement was one. The Baroness is the past. Cruella is the future as one way or another by Blondie Place. As Baroness finds the next signature piece, Cruella continues her provocations to show stage to go by the clash. Baroness in contemplates legal action, but Roger takes a opportunity to pursue his true passion as a songwriter. Hmm. As Stella and Horse are prepared materials for the Baroness, which seems like the goal she was after, but it's also related to her plan. The Baroness also takes Estelle out to lunch, none too certain about what the true plan for her centerpiece is. The Smiles Law, a lot of Palace of Devil Wears Prada, and a made of soft spot for that book and movie. This scene also serves a key reason why this film was not only the antithesis of Disney's previous live action versions, but also their previous adaptation of 101 Dalmatians. While likes of Aladdin and Simba ultimately shaped in the best version of themselves by those around them, Cruella is corrupted by the same influences. That night, Jasper and Horse play the next part of the plan. It was very nice outfits. It would be a shame if something happened to them. Mm. The night has come for the Baroness's big show, and we get the payoff from Horse's early delivery. Her vault has been tampered with, and her collection has been eaten by golden moths. There's your standout scene in the park for Cruella's show, and a fantastic cover of the Stooges' I Want to Be Your Dog. Craig Gillespie previously directed the biopic I, Tonya, so he definitely has a flair for period theatrics. As for her Dalmatian print coat, I definitely expect this movie to always get some nominations for Best Caution Design come award season. Hmm. The Baroness, however, responds in kind by tying up loose ends. She's convinced to let Jasper Horse live, but she's across the line by framing them for arson and murder. Her A is able to save her from the blaze and be able to truth about her past. The Baroness was her mother all along, having killed her adopted mother Catherine ten years ago. Also the rival heiress to Hellman Hole. Her A is played by Mark Strong, who returns her necklace. I argued this before, but given this reveal, this movie actually makes a decent live-action Kill Hill adaptation, as Cruella and the Baroness come off like Ryoko Matoy, and we go Q in respectively, without superpowers in many respects. Breaking mm. Jasper and Horace out of prison, Cruella decides to go for one last big score at Hellman Hole, and one of the party goers and, and players Glenn Close, the previous live action Cruella. Bald Nod's previous takes some material, that might actually be my favorite one. As the party goers have symbolically become Cruella, Estella takes advantage of the Baroness of Vain antagonism one last time, turning the Baroness's own kill instinct against her. Sal's cast off the cliff, the time full view of everyone. Baron's incarcerated, and symbolically, Estella is dead. There is only Cruella. We close on a symbolic funeral for Estella, as she has become the new keeper of Hell Hole, as it's now known, along with Jasper and Horace, taking up the title of Cruella de Vil. She's even a stinger, as Roger and Nita are getting puppies of Ponga Perdita. Not a bit surprised the sequel is in early development. While I am still not certain how the cinematic landscape will look over the coming decade, I can say this was definitely an interesting experiment, as was the spoiler review. I might consider looking at other 101 Dalmatians stories in the near future, but for now, I'll keep enjoying this weird and wonderful take on a few Disney villains. If it doesn't thrill you, then no evil thing will. That'll be all for now, and I will see you another time. Mm -hmm.